All right, so you guys uh, head to Saskatchewan this week for back-to-back -back away games. Uh, now the, the Brackers team, they sit a little bit lower in the standings. They have a bit, uh, bit harder time uh, finding the net. How do you keep your guys sort of motivated uh, and not let them look too far ahead uh, in the season and sort of uh, overlook a game like this? Well, a couple of things. We, we remind them constantly, for sure. I mean, uh, every practice, all the time, whenever we see them, don't forget. You know, we can't take them lately. I'll be doing that again in today's practice. Um, I've, uh, uh, I did a casino on the weekend and, uh, uh, in Fort Mac, and I just happened to be, they happened to be playing uh, Keanu. So, oh, okay. so I did get a chance to pre-scout, so I pretty well know what they have. And uh, I haven't told our players because um, uh, I don't feel at this point in time, um, you know, I don't want to make it even harder to get these guys up for a game. So, sure. um, it, it, it's a lot of uh, individual um, focus on, on each player. He, he needs to, at this level, they need, they need to be able to get themselves up for a game. And I know it's difficult, and I know it, it, I, I see it time and time again, and I don't for whatever reason, um, usually the first game for us is always a, a difficult one. And it really? seems like all my teams and all the, in my career coaching, um, in the ACAC is that that first game um, it seems that we, we don't we're not met ready um, but in game two we're always uh, seem to have a lot more success and, uh, and play well so in this particular case uh, we don't want to look ahead but we also know how important these two games are uh, because of the fact that if, if we win both games and Augustana uh, splits with Nate uh, we're so alone in first place so right. so there is something there uh, you know um, that uh, to keep them focused and then like the carrot at the end of the stick. So uh, hopefully that, that'll be enough to make sure we're ready in game one. Okay. You are sitting firmly in, in second place at the moment. Uh, as far as expectations go, are, are you where you thought you'd be at this point in the season? Well, yeah, I, you know, before the season starts, I look at the schedule and, and I say, well, okay, we should win this one, we'll split here, we'll win this one. And I try to be as honest with myself as possible and, and and not have unrealistic uh, expectations, but uh, I thought we might have lost one here along the way or had another mm -hmm. tie in there, so uh, we're definitely where I'd hoped we'd be. Okay. Uh, and realistically, I thought, well, we probably would not be, but once you, you know, we had a good preseason, you know, um, right. we had seven and three, and that carried over, and and, uh, and it all starts in, in, uh, in camp, in training camp. Uh, everybody that said it was going to be here showed up, which was a, a great start. And then as we progressed through the, the exhibition series, um, we saw again that uh, um, you know, the team was starting to gel. And, and uh, so the, the goals and expectations have been uh, uh, altered a bit to, to include that. And uh, so now we're at five and one. It, it's, uh, it's a pleasant surprise, but I wouldn't say that unexpected after seeing the team after about the first six weeks. Okay. Now, you guys haven't had too much of an issue putting the puck in the net here. You're averaging better than four goals a game. you got three players in the top ten in points. What can you say about your uh, your pretty potent offensive attack? Well, it's nice. It's nice to have that type of uh, firepower. Um, you know, usually teams have one strong line and then they sort of divvy up the next three lines. Uh, you know, we've got two, two and a half exceptional offensive lines and uh, you know, we're trying to find right now the roles of some certain players playing a certain role because uh, you still need the checkers, you still need right. uh, you know, players that can are shut down line, that can shut down the other team's top line. So I think we've got that. Mm -hmm. I think right now with the Gettys line and the Drew line, I think you, you see two extremely skilled lines. Um, right now the, the Gettys line is probably not where they want to be, and, and, and I'm sure if you asked them, they would say the same thing. Where, where the Drew line is sort of shouldering the load right now. Okay. And uh, but what happens when you get into some of these games? They'll put a checking line on what they perceive the other team perceives as the number one line, mm -hmm. which just frees up the other line. And, and with us, so we have two pretty solid lines and uh, there as far as offensively. And and then uh, you know you've got our uh, uh, Richard Cameron's line, who's they've been shipping in with goals, and that was supposed to be literally the third, fourth line checking line. And right. so. Um, it's just, it's a, I think it's a confidence thing. I think that you, they, you know everybody wants to be a part of that. Um, uh, whereas also uh, the camera lines are shut down line and they've been outstanding in that. If we ask them to, you know, to shut go against head to head with the other team's uh, top line, they, they thrive on that. So, so not only are they doing that, they're also uh, you know, contributing with goals. And uh, so, you know, 
you can never have enough scoring. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, you know that we have some other issues we need to work on constantly, and not just playing without the puck and, and mm -hmm. defensive zone coverage and that. But I think uh, scoring is another thing. Is it's, it's you can't really teach it. Either you have it or you don't. And, and we we're, we're seem to be blessed with a lot of guys that have got that that knack to put the puck in the net or uh, or the patience at times to put the puck in the net. So it's we're really enjoying that right now. And, and I think two things at the end of well three things at the end of the day. You need goaltending. Um, you need someone to be able to put the puck in the net, and you have to be strong in your end. And, and defensive hockey, you can teach. Uh, there isn't a player out there that can't learn how to play properly in his own end. Right. Scoring, it's tough to teach. It's either you have or you don't. Okay. And uh, I guess if, if we can talk about one thing that you guys are working on, you did mention um, defensively, you probably have uh, let in a few more goals than you would have liked to. Is that something that you're constantly working on uh, to try and improve as the season goes on? Well, we work on our, our defensive zone breakouts and, and, um, and coverage every practice. So it's something that we spend at least 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Okay. So, it, you know, it's an ongoing project. Um, and so, because we know that, we, 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 everybody's got to be on the same page as far as what their responsibilities are when the puck is dropped or when the puck is dumped in by the opposition into our end and, and how we react and how we defend against it. So, uh, so we're able to do that uh, pretty well every practice and that's something that we definitely work on. Okay. Uh, do you have any, any lingering injuries or anything that's, uh, anyone out of this weekend's matchups? No, everybody should play uh, at least one game. I mean, we're going to try and accommodate some of the players. Uh, uh, a lot of the players are from Saskatchewan, so I want to make sure they're getting into the games. And uh, uh, right now, we've only got one, and, and uh, Brett Kipling is still out for okay. another two weeks. And uh, you know, he, he's going to add to our defensive core. I mean, he's a highly skilled, mobile defenseman that we've, uh, you know, that had a, he had a great preseason. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we've done pretty well without him in the lineup, but he does make us better in the lineup. So uh, ultimately, you know. Um, we're waiting for him to come back, and so for talking to him yesterday, it's at least another two weeks. He's hoping to be ready for the state uh, okay. uh, weekend. So, uh, but other than that, uh, we're healthy. We're we're eager. Um, again, and there's there, uh, with that comes uh, some headaches for me because now everybody can play, and we have uh, you know five lines and eight defensemen or seven defensemen. So I've got to be able to juggle that and, and try to accommodate, keep everybody happy. And but it's it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it also makes people work hard on ice and, and, and they become accountable because now, uh, in the past years, like we just didn't have enough players that if someone had a bad game or, or was indifferent about his performance, there wasn't anything we could do about it because uh, we were always playing you know shorthanded. Like we just didn't have the bodies. Nowadays it's a little different. So everybody's accountable. Everybody realizes. That if they don't come committed and ready and focused to play, they'll be out of the lineup. Uh, although it hasn't shown as much um, <laughs> in, in, in our games, but you know, reading the games that we weren't uh, didn't have great starts, we all shot the opposition badly. Right. It's just we weren't sharp and, and finishing. So uh, you know, the, that's why I really wasn't concerned. Uh, you're getting your scoring chances. You're still getting your scoring chances. Uh, you're just not finishing. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, how's Jordan Lane doing uh, as far as? Uh, coming into the team, um, what what can we expect his role to be in this coming uh, week's games? Well, it's definitely not going to be the same role he had as a pro. I mean, he was there to keep everybody honest. He was there to sort of uh, protect his his teammates and that. And and uh, so his role with us is not even. I mean, we're not even considering that because it, there is no fighting in our league. Um, he's here to develop his skill. He he uh, wants to go back at some point in time, if it's next year or the year after. You know. Um, but uh, this gives him a great chance to work on things for himself personally. Uh, you know, whether you know his skating labors a little bit. He still skates pretty good. You know, where it takes uh, uh, Dustin Pop, which uh, ten strides to get it through the neutral zone, it takes him too. So is that because he's clumsy, make him a bad skater? No, he still gets for me to be pretty good. Uh, in the first game that he played against uh, uh, Grant McEwen, uh, Bill Hunter Arena in Edmonton, it doesn't have a lot of give on the boards and. Uh, uh, unfortunately, to a couple of Griffins, he was able to catch them, and and it, I mean he's 230 pounds, six foot eight, and, and when he hits you, it, it, he doesn't even have to hit you that hard; it, it hurts. So, uh, no, he's done everything. And he's very intelligent defensively. I think because uh, at the pro level, if he didn't know how to def you know properly to, uh, play his position in, in his own zone, he wouldn't get much ice time. So, sure. you know, at that level, uh, the professional level, you need to know and understand what your responsibilities are on your end, and, and he knows that, and he's a very intelligent player. And, and so right now, uh, you know, I've already got confidence in him in his own end. It's just a matter now, 
uh, of him developing some other things. He's got a great shot. He had some great chances in, in Edmonton. So, uh, and he fits in really good. He's a, a, a very personal uh, person. Uh, gets along great with the other guys. So I can really see him being a, a, a real plus for us uh, in the long haul. Uh, especially when we start playing the, uh, you know, the Nates and the Sates. Um, because they've got some big boys there too. So, so between him and Lipinski uh, and a lot of others, I mean, it, it's uh, we've got a lot of uh, toughness as well as skill. Uh, it, it should make for an interesting in, uh, finish for the first to the first half. Okay. Um, now, just just sort of before we go here, uh, there is a significant amount of travel time to get to Saskatchewan. Do you think that will hurt uh, your opening game at all, or do you, do you expect your team to be you know ready to go? Uh, no, I, I think that most of these players come from a background where they, they, they were on the bus all the time. I mean, this is nothing new. It's, it's you know, you sort of spend more time on the bus than you do at home, really, <laughs> in some, uh, some of the leagues. So, no, I, I think that we're leaving, uh, you know, for years, um, we, would, we would leave at 10 o'clock at night to arrive 8 in the morning, uh, have a pre-skate, a meal, and everybody would crash, and then get up just prior to the game. And uh, that, I can see, is, you know, and to overcome that, uh, it, was, it was a lot tougher than what we're doing now. We're leaving, you know, right after school at four, and we're getting in by one. But the players are going to get eight hours of sleep, uh, and then they'll go for a, have a good breakfast, and go for a skate, and uh, have a pregame. So I, I think uh, by leaving uh, the, actually the day before, uh, they're going to be better, better prepared, better uh, rested for for the uh, for the two games. And then the other kicker in this is that the second game's at two o'clock in the afternoon, so uh, it's a turnover very quickly, and uh, so you know we. we what we try to do with that is because you can, you know, you want players to sleep in a little bit on for day two, and uh, sometimes we just don't get a chance to go for breakfast. So what we'll do is we'll just bring a, a breakfast to them with bagels and and juices and fruits and stuff like that, uh, sort of as their pre uh, pre game pre breakfast uh, nourishment, and that really seems to work. We've been doing that for now for two years, and mm -hmm. they seem to gather a lot of energy out of that, and then uh, then right after the game we're gone. So all right. Well, two games in Saskatchewan this week. Uh, best of luck, Coach, and uh, we'll be back next week. Great.